I know what you're thinking. Reese in front of the camera rather than behind it. Something's wrong here, but uh, no, your eyes do not deceive you. I'm actually here. Today, I thought we would go through something that's quite prominent, and especially if you are in the world of selling things online, something that you should be taking into consideration. In a world where people are buying and selling products online, you want your product to stand out amongst the rest. So today, we're gonna to talk about the fundamentals of product photography and how best to get it going. But wait, 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 wait. Before we even begin, um, I thought I would uh, highlight the fact that some of you haven't subscribed to the channel. Um, and if you haven't already, please feel free to like and subscribe because that's something we're trying to build upon. We've been looking for our analytics and statistics and it turns out only 65% of people that watch our content are subscribed. So if you do want to see more of me, and I know some of you do, then just hit subscribe. Fundamental number one, know your target audience. Who are you selling to? Who do you want to buy your product? The target audience should always be at the forefront of your mind whenever you are deciding to task yourself with product photography. Keeping your target audience in your mind allows you to think of new and creative ways to get your product into their hands. Start to establish yourself as a brand and as a company by using product imagery to show your identity. For instance, think of a brand like Apple. If you look at their website, they're constantly keeping things sleek with their brand and their identity. They know how to take their product photos. They know how to make them engaging because they know who their target audience is. So you've got your target audience. You know who you're aiming your products at. So now we need to actually think about the product. So here's fundamental two. Know your product. What are you selling? Is it clothing? Is it food? What makes your product special? What makes it different to the other ones that are out there? you're gonna to have to start doing some research and checking out the competition. See what they're doing, see what's making them sales and getting them well known. And before you come at me, I'm not saying steal or copy anything. I'm saying take inspiration. So for instance, you could see a fashion brand selling a nice t-shirt and you have something that's very similar. See how they've done theirs and see how you can make your own spin on it to display your brand and its identity. Get creative. And going off the product, you're gonna have to start actually looking in depth at it. So for instance, look at the fine intricacies. So what makes yours different? What makes it stand out? What makes yours the best of the best and the reason people should buy it? Whilst admiring these uh, different hearts, uh, you should just get to know them as much as you're gonna know your target audience. Y your product should be as known as the back of your hand. That's what the back of my hand looks like. If you were buying this product, what would you be looking for? What would you want to stand out? What images would you want to see about the product that make you want to buy it? These are all things that you should take into consideration when you're doing this. Because at the end of the day, you can be your own worst enemy. And if you do put your item on a pedestal, better than everyone else, but can't back it up with substance, no one's gonna trust you. So now you know your product, you know your target audience, you know who you are selling to, now we need to actually start taking the photos. And I think the best place to start is lighting. Fundamental three, getting to know your lighting. You really need to know how best to turn your lights on. You weren't meant to see that. There are several different lighting techniques and setup that a lot of people will use and vouch behind. But there's one core one, which is the fundamental of all lighting setups, and that's called three-point lighting. Now, like I said, there are loads of lighting techniques and lighting setups, and I will eventually do a video breaking them all down. And if you really want to see that, just comment below. I'm using a three-point lighting setup right now. I have my key light in front of me, which is creating the main light in the studio. It is shining onto my body, giving me definition, creating shadows and contrast where it needs to be, but it's also highlighting my whole face. So that's probably the reason you can see me right now. If I didn't have it, it would look like this. Notice how significantly darker I look and you can probably struggle to see me. Let's turn it back on. See, you can see me now. The light behind me, the lamp, is currently my backlight. It's making me not seem 2D. It's giving me definition and depth. So that's the main source that you want it for. You don't want your subject or item to be fading into obscurity. And last but not least is fill lights. They don't actually need to be a light per se. They could be a piece of white paper. So when you are taking your photos, 
if it does look like it needs a little bit of something in the shadows to help bring out more of the details and stuff, just get yourself a little bit of white paper, put it in front of your key light, and you can fill it up. It will look nice. I've currently got some fill light going on from the strip lights that are given some definition in the areas, and the green light that's down here. It just makes the room feel a bit more full and not just two lights, dark, dingy, dark and light, always bouncing off each other. So yeah, that's what a three point lighting setup does. And it's probably the best way to start when you are getting your photography off the ground. But regardless of this, you don't need to have professional lighting setups to take your product photography. One thing I would like to hone in is you can take your photos with whatever lights you can find. For instance, you can take some photos with this lamp. You can also take some photos with your phone torch, which I have done as well. Or even you can just use the sun. You don't have to be using professional industry standard equipment to create your product photography. And that's one thing I would like to get out there to the masses. You don't need to have the flashiest equipment, the flashiest lights, the flashiest anything. You can do it all with what you have in your pocket, and that is your phone. And so, speaking of which, let's start getting into equipment. So, fundamental three, get to know your equipment. Common misconception in the industry that the better the equipment, the better the photography, or the photographer. But that's not the case. It's all about utilizing the equipment you have rather than having the best out there. You're not a trained photographer. You're not gonna have the most expensive equipment. If there's one thing that I can make you take away from this video and I really wanna highlight, and I probably will mention several times, is that you can make the most of what you have. You have so much technology at your fingertips just in your mobile phone. So you utilize it. You can do anything with the right mindset. It's just about getting yourself in that mindset to begin with. So. I've taken some photos on my phone and I've also done the same on my camera. And I'm going to show you what I've done with them, okay? So I use a Sony a6300 for all my equipment. It's a bit outdated, it's quite a few years old. I think it's like six or five, six or seven, round about that, round about that mark. So it's a few years old. So the, the software, everything is a little bit dated, but I'm not gonna get anything any new anytime soon because it does the job that I need it to do because I push it as far as I can. And so if you're interested in my settings, here they are. Raw codec, aspect ratio, three to two, aperture 2.8, but that may vary depending on what you are doing. White balance, cloudy, because it's a nice neutral tone. And zebra ring 100 and peaking is on. These are my settings. I've been using these settings for years and I've grown accustomed to them and I like them. I like it because I have good dynamic range. I can do what I want with the photos. The plethora of options I can get is insane. But these might not work for you, and that's fine. They don't have to work for you. You need to find what will work for you. So, trial and error. But if you are taking pictures on your phone, I can show you how to best optimize it. Not a lot of people know, but you can adjust the camera exposure, which happens when you tap the screen and hold it. You also have a drop down arrow at the top, which allows you to adjust it there too. It will come up with a plus and minus in a circle. That is your exposure. Adjust this if you need more light or less light. It's up to you. Next aspect ratio. The starting option, four to three, this will automatically be selected when you open the app itself. In the middle, you have the option square, one to one. This is useful if you are planning on putting things on social media or other places. And lastly, you have 16 to nine. Personally, I would leave it at four to three. You have a nice amount of leeway to adjust and you can crop out with what's, what's not necessarily needed. You also have the option to change the colors. Now, this is gonna be my biggest tip if you're doing things on your phone. Don't bother. Don't bother touching the colors. You can do that in your editing. Once you put a color on it, you can't take it off. So just leave it. Keep it the way it is and then you have more range. And there you go. That just shows you the capability of the thing that's just sitting in your pocket. It's insane, I know. But I've taken a lot of photos on my phone and I find them quite nice. I like them a lot because they're sufficient. You don't really have to think too much and there's a lot of capability within them. Also, the fact that we've got a two lens setup now is insane. We have a lovely fisheye if you want to do some nice wide angles and you have a nice tight lens if you need to. It's great. 
And with the better of the phone, the more camera options you do have. So just trust it. You can do well with these, I promise. So we've got to grips with the equipment. We know our lighting. So the next thing we need to do is, well, backdrop. So that's where Fundamental 5 comes in. Source your backdrop. Probably the easiest fundamental out of the list is the backdrop. I take a lot of my photos on a white backdrop, which you've seen a lot in this video already. Alas, I use a white backdrop because it fits the content that I have to make. But you can utilize any backdrop you want. It's about utilizing the environment and the settings that you've got around you and finding which one best suits your product. A lot of clothing brands do a substantial amount of their photography out and about in urban areas, fields, woods, you name it, they do it. Clothing brands such as ASOS, River Island, Lucy and Yak, Urban Outfitters and Boohoo. They take a lot of their clothing and their models out and about because it just fits their aesthetic. But picking an environment does also relate back to the previous steps that we have established already. You might find it easier for having your sun be your main source of light if you're out and about in the street or in the woods. But if you are in a studio or you are inside someone's house, you will need to think about artificial light. That's why I mentioned about lamps and also phone lights. So now you've got this in your mind, let's go on to the next fundamental, which is fundamental six, knowing your angles and framing. Knowing your angles is probably one of the more important fundamentals on the list. It's quite weird, I go from one of the easiest to one of the more important ones. But angles are what really can make your product stand out. See, there's a lot of angles to cover and I probably will end up having to do a separate video to go through all of them. There's a couple that I will go through right now though that I use a lot, which is mid shot. Mid shot will give you a nice amount of range whilst keeping your subject in a good depth. It's good for product photography, videography, and all of the above, just because you have such versatile range with it. Low angle shots work really well to give the product an essence of power and control. Close-ups are probably the most important one you can do. As I mentioned before, you wanted to show your details and your intricacies, make them want to buy your product, and using close-ups is a great way to do so. And that's it. Bang, done. You know what you're doing. You can do product photography now. I mean, obviously there's still a lot to learn. There's a lot of caveats and stuff that you still have to get to grips with, but you know the fundamentals. You can be your own product photographer. Hello? You ain't finished. Because you've only done six. It's seven fundamentals, not six. So you need to I do did it. Say seven, didn't Come I? On. Well, there is one more part to product photography, but I can't really do that here. So let's go do somewhere else. Who are you talking to? <sighs> right. Fundamental number seven is editing. Uh, so as you know, editing is mainly just down to preference and how things are shot. But I can kind of give you a rough idea of how I like to edit my photos. So let's begin. I'm gonna show you the basic corrections that I do on my photos. So firstly, it's filtering time. Don't be surprised if you go from hundreds and only have like 20 left. You will notice on the right hand side, there's a develop button. Hit that and we can get cracking. The three basics that are my first port to call are contrast. It creates definition and gives detail. Without contrast, you'll notice that a lot of objects can seem quite two dimensional. Number two is color temperature. You can adjust the blues and the yellows which make up the color temp range of the image. Exposure. Exposure is the last one, and probably one of the more important ones. You can increase and decrease the exposure to make the image lighter and darker. Not to be mistaken with highlights and shadows, however. So you get your exposure right, everything will follow. Checking your exposure is also important when you are taking the photos as well. It should be taken into consideration. You don't want to overexpose, otherwise it can look like this. You don't want to underexpose, otherwise it can look like this. After sorting out these basics, you can then start going through the highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, adjusting the curves, split toning, adjusting tints, everything. This is what I'm saying I should probably save properly editing for another video. So if you do want to see that, please comment below. When you keep going down that list, you'll notice more things you can adjust, such as HSL, which is hue, saturation, and luminance. Again, like I said, I can go more in thorough in a separate video, but for the moment, I'll just keep it very simple. You can also add vignette, 
grain, everything. You can do that in Lightroom. Or you can just press auto. You shouldn't feel shoehorned by other editors out there to make sure you do everything separately by manual. You aren't gonna know all the different editing softwares. So you can auto things, even if it's just a basis to get the idea of what you want things to look like. I'm gonna add, just so I don't get slated in the comments, I do prefer editing things by manual so I can adjust little bits here and there and make things look cleaner and the polish look that I want to go for. But each their own. I'm not gonna judge anyone for using auto. There has been some times where I have had to chuck a little auto on it. No one's gonna judge you for it. There are also presets on Lightroom, which is a great way for you to get a basis of how you want things to look if you did wanna be a bit more creative and change colors here and there. But I would suggest probably finding the best color palette for your product. You don't wanna say something that it isn't. You don't wanna show something that it isn't. You don't want people to believe that something's green when it's actually yellow. And for all the mobile users out there, if you didn't want to edit on your laptop and pay for a subscription, you can also get Lightroom free for your phone. So if you want to practice with it and you want to just work on your phone or you don't really have a laptop and you know funds are tight, you can get a free version of Lightroom on your phone. And it's definitely on Apple because I use it myself. Now that's it, the seven fundamentals of product photography. And what I would like you to take away from this video is that everything can be done with the thing inside your pocket. Don't believe for a second that this is something that you can't do because I believe everyone can be their own product photographer. You just need to get yourself in the right mindset, utilize your surroundings, and the rest will come naturally. Take the stuff that I've given to you in this video as the first step to being the best you can be. Make sure you don't give up at the first hurdle because you can achieve great things. And if you have taken some great product photography, or even if you're just starting out and you wanna get my opinion, leave that in the comment section below, tag me in it, and I'll try and get back to you. And if you did make it to the end of this video, thank you so much, it means the world to us. Uh, like and subscribe, you know, do all the little bits that YouTube asks you to do. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.